When you think about life on Mars, you probably imagine aliens, desert creatures, or perhaps a tribe of Martians that look just like us, hiding out on the reddest planet in the solar system. It's a fair thought too. Most of us long for the day our long-awaited speculation proves to be true, that we aren't alone in the universe, and our neighbouring planet shows the impossible is possible. However, before we can even discuss the possibility of life on Mars, we must first dissect the history and legacy of water on Mars, for without water, living organisms are completely out of the picture. As of today, there are still very small increments of water found across Mars's dusty terrain, all in the form of ice crystals, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, there's a growing theory that while the days of Mars resembling a smaller Earth are over, the days of water on Mars are still here, potentially underneath the surface of the still mysterious red planet. Before we dive into the subterranean levels of Mars to search for water, we must first understand the history of water on Mars, the signs that point to its aquatic evolution, and how water from above eventually sank solely below. It's also important to make one thing clear, as of present day, it is physically impossible for liquid water to exist on most of Mars's rugged surface, outside of its absolute lowest elevation points. It has nothing to do with the planet's distance from the Sun or levels of oxygen, but rather the vastly lower atmospheric pressure when compared to Earth's. Mars's atmospheric pressure at ground level is measured at 6.518 millibars, or 0 0.095 psi. At sea level, Earth's pressure measures in at 14.7 psi, 99.4% greater than that of Mars. For liquid water to be present, the pressure would have to rise well above its 6.5 threshold. Yet if we turn time back billions of years, these impossibilities weren't even a flap of a butterfly's wings. It's estimated by astronomers that a few billion years ago, Mars was covered in vast oceans of water, much like modern-day Earth. The biggest clue scientists and historians have in their investigation is the geomorphology and unique landmarks found across Mars's surface. One of the most common landforms included in the evidence are outflow channels, large linear tracks of scoured ground etched into the crust. Mars features around 25 of these outflow channels around the planet. How the channels formed are a mystery to many, with experts calculating theories from prehistoric lava flow to the destructive process of glacier movement. However, the dominating theory is that water formed the outflow channels in the very early days of Mars's formation. Water can create swathes of scoured crust when subsurface aquifers, sections of saturated ground that provide water sources for wells or springs, release an inordinate amount of water that then erodes its surroundings over thousands of years. The largest of these potential water-bearing channels is Maadim Vallis, measuring at roughly 700 kilometers or 430 miles long, over 50% longer than Grand Canyon. Additionally, being 20 kilometers wide and 2 kilometers deep, a steady yet prehistoric water flow is the best guess at how these canyons transformed within the sedimentary rocks. Not all of the outflow channels are billions of years old, however. There are shallower and more recently formed tracks, and are estimated at only a few million years in comparison, much closer to modern history than the Big Bang. Other landmarks seen as evidence of water on Mars are the tree branch shaped valley networks littered across the oldest remaining stretches of the red planet's surface. These valleys are much smaller when scaled to Maadim Vallis and the outflow channels, but are much more spread out and cover a wider portion of Mars in general. Astronomers believe the network valleys formed as runoff water from actual precipitation in the early days of Mars's existence. Others argue it was due to the subsurface aquifers and that water was always below the surface, but the evidence points more towards precipitation. 
Mars also features several unique landmarks that are also found here on Earth, where water has been proven to form such properties. One of which are gullies, found in the canyons and certain craters of Mars that resemble the gullies of our planet. These are formed purely from running water through easily erodible surfaces like soil. Others range from dried river deltas to alluvial fans, a cone-shaped section of ground formed by the buildup of sedimentary rocks and materials. Alluvial fans specifically are found in craters and historically are strongly associated with warm and wet climates. They are the leading clue for astronomers to assume Mars was once covered by crater lakes. Lakes themselves formed from volcanic activity and preceding rainfall or aquifers. Evidence of possible water on Mars doesn't stop with landmarks. Astronomers have used mineral readouts from rock samples on Mars to date back liquefied water on the red planet. Two of these minerals found in high quantities across Mars are hematite and gothite. Both minerals are customary iron oxides, often found at the bottom of lakes due to a pattern of forming in bodies of water. Another unique mineral found on Mars is jarosite, a popular sulfate commonly associated with acid mine drainage and acidic water in general. While the specific type of content found in the prehistoric water of Mars is also unknown, acid water would fit within the parameters of Mars' initial formation. The final property of Mars' surface pointing in the direction of ancient water is the levels of deuterium recorded by various NASA rovers and instruments in the last 25 years. Deuterium is a stable isotope of hydrogen, also referred to as heavy hydrogen. Deuterium can naturally be found in high quantities around Earth's oceans, and nearly 100% of all deuterium particles originate directly from the Big Bang. Back on Mars, deuterium measurements are largest around the Red Planet's low northern plains, where atmospheric readings put the deuterium levels at eight times higher than modern-day deuterium levels on Earth. There were also high levels of deuterium in the atmosphere around the Gale Crater on Mars, a feature astronomers have long described as a dry lake, where outflow channels leading away from the crater are quite prominent. These readings suggest not only did Mars feature vast oceans in ancient times, but that these oceans covered much of the planet, with depths upwards of hundreds of metres. Some believe the ocean in the low northern plains was only the size of the Arctic Ocean here on Earth, while others believe measuring deuterium is an unreliable method to prove the existence of water and that there were no lakes or oceans of any size at all. In the end, despite various landmarks and sedimentary laden anomalies, scientists leave the history of water on Mars as unconfirmed territory, claiming the climate models built for the Red Planet's history simply do not leave enough evidence to prove water was ever liquefied, whether it was a few millions or a few billions of years ago. Despite a clear lack of liquid water, Mars technically isn't without any H2O in all of its forms. At both of the red planet's poles rest massive, permanent polar ice caps. During each of the poles' winter seasons, the ice caps remain in total darkness for days on end. The entire surface becomes very cold, and upwards of 30% of the atmosphere converts to slabs of dry ice, or ice made of CO2. After the winter season's end, the polar ice caps are once again exposed to sunlight. Once the sun heats up the poles, the ice sublimes, going from a solid to a gas. The intense sublimation across the atmosphere increases the transfer of water vapour and dust particles across Mars, creating a slight frost on the surface and a build-up of water-filled cirrus clouds in the sky. The northern ice cap is made up of about 70% water ice, and has six periods where the water ice is directly exposed to airspace. The southern ice cap is permanently covered by a sheath of dry ice, even during warmer seasons, but is predicted to eventually weather away millions of years down the line. If the atmospheric pressure and weather patterns on Mars were to ever change significantly enough to heat the planet, and the polar ice caps on either end melted, there would be enough liquid water to submerge the entire planet in an equal depth of 1.5 meters. 
Many of NASA's scout missions across Mars have also led to conclusive evidence that water is more prevalent on the Red Planet than previously thought. One of these scouting endeavours came in March 2007, when the rover named Spirit found chemical compound samples that contained trace amounts of water molecules. Another positive discovery came six years later, in March of 2013, when Curiosity pulled up rock samples on Mars with evidence of mineral hydration. The rover then used its DAN instrument to scan the ground and perform a deep dive into potential subsurface H2O. Its findings were promising to say the least. On a trek between landing zones on Mars, Curiosity detected 4% water content at depths up to 60 centimeters or 2 feet under the red surface. On multiple occasions, once in September of 2015 and then again in February of 2020, scientists at NASA found water molecules trapped in the salt crystals flowing through hydrated brine flowage on slope lineae. The brine flows only in the Martian summer at incredibly quick intervals, but appears to come from shallow aquifers right under the topsoil. There was also an instance in 2021 when a research device sponsored by the European Space Agency called the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, relayed signs of subsurface water existing in Valles Marineris, a canyon system larger than any other non-Earth rift in the solar system. The biggest finding came in 2017, when the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter photographed 100 meter thick water ice sheets using its ultra-powerful high-rise camera. These sheets were detected between Mars's 35 degree north and 45 degree south latitude lines accounting for nearly one-third of the red planet's surface. While the water ice sheets are mostly covered by a 1-2 to two meter layer of soil, it's accessible enough to provide immense amounts of information regarding the history of Mars' climate when fully studied by astronomers. The ice sheets also provide a vast stretch of frozen water resources for future explorers, both of robotic and human origin. They could theoretically make long-term residency on Mars a more realistic opportunity as well, as extracting this water ice wouldn't require complex equipment. With all of the modern-day research suggesting Mars's water truly exists underneath the surface, the only question left to answer is why. For years, scientists built reflective models to decipher why Mars no longer displays water above ground despite all of its landforms hinting otherwise. These studies showed that the most likely explanation was the stripping of Mars's atmosphere by the Sun's intense radiation. After the atmosphere was shredded away, the water would have escaped into space for good. In the last couple of years, these models have been updated, and astronomers have simulated the history of Mars since the Big Bang with more accuracy. The results reflected a different scenario than the original theory, that the water was sucked into the solar system. Rather, researchers now believe the disappearance of the red planet's water is a mix of the previous scenario, and the trapping of water by the unique mineral composition in the soil on Mars. Astronomers estimate anywhere between 30 to 99% of Mars's ancient water was saturated underground, with the rest fulfilling the space-sucking theory. The atmosphere's depletion would make sense of Mars's low density and atmospheric pressure, which is the reason why liquid water cannot thrive on its surface in the first place. The specific cause for such a volatile event isn't understood fully by astronomers, but the dominating theory is that the loss of the magnetic field left Mars susceptible to the Sun's unlimited power. With the information from the new predictive models, the deuterium factor, and the abundance of hydrated minerals sampled by multiple space rovers, it makes sense that at least some of the water on Mars escaped into the crust. While the amount of water that once filled Mars's vast oceans was probably too great to be absorbed within, any remaining water was probably jettisoned into the Milky Way through hydrogen molecules, and the rest is history. As astronomers continue their efforts to unlock new mysteries and answer long gestated questions about Mars and its water, we look forward to what it could mean if water truly does exist underground. It could lead to more expansive human-led missions on the Red Planet, and the next step in our journey to find microbial life across the cosmos. 
Thanks for joining us for this week's Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week, where we will explore more of our infinite universe.